what's the word? What's the word, Bills Mafia? The preseason is officially in the books. Um, not the, I guess, end result that you would want in terms of uh, wins and losses. Obviously, we went one and two throughout the preseason. But um, as a whole, man, I thought it was good. Um, I thought that we got some quality information about a lot of our players, man, some of the starters, guys that we think are going to be stepping up into new roles, and guys that are competing for roster spots, man. But I thought that this final game against the Carolina Panthers that we, you know, took the L on 31-26, I thought that there were still some really promising things that took place. So, you know how we do this thing, man. Hit that like button on the front end, and don't forget to subscribe because you know we got to talk about the guys, all right? So first, let me start with my J. M U Duke product. I'm talking Ben DiNucci. Obviously, we know we signed him about a week ago, right before the uh, Steelers game, and he came out and, you know, played what two, almost three quarters of that whole game before Mitch uh, Trubisky went down. And it was a lot of run, 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 hand the ball off. Well, this week he had a little bit more time in practice, and it reflected in the stadium. We got a chance to see you know, him being allowed to throw it a lot more and just showing a little bit more command of the offense. Now, we know he's still getting up to speed, but I thought we saw some of the uh, short to intermediate accuracy that has been on his tape since his college ball. We also got a chance to see him utilize his legs. So when we're talking about, you know, what Danucci could potentially bring, man, we're looking at the depth element behind Josh. Now, we know it starts and ends with Josh. So if Josh ain't out there, good luck. But either way, we still going to send the eval to the homie Danucci. And I thought Anthony Brown, who we also had just signed earlier this week, thought that he came out there and uh, provided some nice, consistent play at the quarterback position, utilizing his legs and his arm. Obviously, he's not a rookie, so we can see some of the veteran experience that showed with him. But I thought that he also had a good uh, rhythm when he was out there with those guys for all things being considered. Now, what really stood out to me was the running game. Frank Gore Jr. We know his pops was there. Salute to the OG Frank Gore. It's crazy to think that I played against that man. <laughs> and now we're watching his son come out here and play. And I'm just like, bro, wow, wow. But I know, man, um, you know, just being in that position potentially, man, as a father to a son, man, I could only imagine how proud Frank Gore must have felt, man, seeing his young guy go out there and cross the 100 rushing yard threshold along with getting a rushing touchdown, man, while pops was in attendance, man. I know that had to be just a awesome awesome one for those guys man so salute them but i thought frank gore jr played really well man i thought that his vision was nice um you could see him cutting out the back side of um uh, out the back door of some of these plays man and you could just see how he can make certain second level defenders have some struggles tackling him and that was on his tape at southern miss that also showed up on his tape at the east west shrine game so it was good to see that he still has the ability to do that with the uptick in competition now granted we understand it was the final preseason game so there is some context with that but i still liked what i saw because for frank gore jr he can only control what he can control he doesn't get to determine who he's playing against all he can do is make those guys miss and be productive and that's what he did i thought him i thought um uh darrington uh I thought that KJ, I thought that all three of those guys ran the ball really well. I thought that we were able to uh, lean on them a little bit more in that second half. And they all had their moments, man. Um, obviously, when we talk about Darrington, I thought that, man, with him, you could see him catching off the backfield. You could also see him running the football. He was a big part of the touchdown, even though Danucci should have had two touchdowns. And I know we overthrew that one. I ain't, ah. It's like, man, don't miss the layup. But it was good to see him come back and hit the back out the backfield because that's something that we've seen Josh do how many times with the man James Cook. We know that's one of the concepts that we like a lot. So it was good to see those guys execute that. And then for KJ Hamler, we know he's more of a do-it-all Swiss Army knife uh, player that has a ton of athleticism and ability. But it was cool to see us put him in the backfield and use him as a traditional like running back in situations, man. Um, that is what you get in the preseason just to see okay, man, we know this guy can catch. We know this guy's more of a return man, a slot receiver, but he can also line up in this backfield and do certain things. So offensively, I did like I did like that, man. I also thought, man, from a receiving standpoint, Deion Kane, a guy that we had just brought in, thought that he flashed, man. I like what I saw from him out there. Xavier Johnson, obviously, man, catching a touchdown pass. That was obviously good. You want to see that. And as a whole, I thought that Justin Shorter, along with uh, Terrell Shavers, man, I thought that they – created some separation at times and it wasn't always reflected in the sense of completions but i thought that they were doing a good job also down the grass man from a receiving standpoint now we know like i said man we didn't have all our guys out there but a couple guys that did stand out to me on defense man those two inside linebackers joe andreessen i mean 
do put a, a heck a heck of a preseason training camp performance together man i thought that he also finished the preseason with a really nice performance when it was ultra productive this last game getting eight tackles um i think he definitely made a, uh, the team without a doubt man i think that you know he's not going to start per se but i think that he will be in that conversation of you know the the, the next man up conversation because the production was there and he did make plays versus some quality opponents as well. <clears throat> I think for me, my hesitancy is watching him make plays in the small sample size versus some of these higher end talented players versus him having to do it over a four quarter game and then repeating the process for 17 plus games and playoffs that I'm going to be uncertain about until I get a chance to see it. But Joe, once again, controlled everything he could and he was productive. Now, it wasn't perfect. But in terms of what he start, where he started versus where he's at right now, man, all you could do is tip your cap to Joe, man. I think that he did everything right that he could to put himself in a great position to be on this roster, man. And I also thought that uh, I'm going to butcher his name, I know, but uh, I'm going to just say Edifon, all right? Edifon, you. Okay, you know the LB on the dark side of defense, man. I thought that he played well. was also productive out there. Um, like I said, man, it was, it was good to see our guys who weren't starters because we didn't play pretty much any starters, but having those guys out there versus the Panthers who did have starters out there. So you could see the shift in the swing of going against the Panther starters. Then when they rotated out and how it became a little bit more even. And then from there, when we rotated out, I felt like it kind of swung back in Carolina's favor, so to speak, man. But as a whole, was really impressed with what we saw. Don't like the fact that we had another missed field goal. All right, it made my PTSD act up a little bit. I ain't even gonna lie. I was like, ah, God, ah, into the right. Dude, it gotta be to the right. Misses to the left this time. All right, just not to the. But I digress. I digress. But with that being the case, man, the preseason is officially over, and now we get to turn to page four, week one. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. But you guys, let me know your thoughts on this preseason, man. Now that it's officially in the books, who stood out to you the most? Who are some of those guys that, you know, compete for roster spots that you might be saying to yourself, man, I think he did enough to make the squad. Joey Andreessen was a big guy in terms of that, checking that box off, right? Because a lot of people had questions about him early on. Then when obviously Matt goes down, he had even more opportunities. But man, for me, I'm like, yo, shout out to Joe. But either way, you know I appreciate you for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that like button one time for the culture and subscribe if you have not done so. But until next time, baby, just remember this one thing. Don't nobody circle the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. Ah!